Hey, Bear, you bring them cigars? Of course I brought the cigars. Oh, hell yeah. I was going to say, if you didn't bring the cigars, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I thought about, what do you mean? Oh, I gotta get my whiskey. I gotta get my whiskey. You gotta get that whiskey, man. Whiskey! You gotta say it with an H. Dude, it's Friday night. <laughs> Is it Friday? Gotta love it's it. It's Wednesday. It's almost Friday. Good God. It's, oh, it's only Wednesday. What the heck? So look, it's been, oh my gosh, a really tough, tough Ooh. week at the Brown House. Mm. Ranger, our German Shepherd, Got neutered today. No. <laughs> it was the worst thing because oh, we poor dog. No, my Man. wife brought him to the vet. Yeah. Oh. And I pick him up and he's in that cone of shame. Yeah, of course. In the cone of shame. I'm like, dude, I'm oh. so sorry. He's like, <laughs> what I decided was though, I was like, I'm just gonna tell him that mommy, it was mommy's idea. No way he didn't piss at me. You know, Absolutely. She, yeah. Her reason it was, be it's you, you and my two boys in this house. There's enough damn testosterone going on in this house. You know, your German Shepherd does not have to be a raging, you know. That's right. He got to humping a little bit. He got that Mississippi leg hound cousin that he was talking with. <laughs> and, and. Oh my gosh. She was finally oh like, God. all right, he's got to go. Yeah. I was like, I looked at him, I was like, I, I don't know how to reason with you. You know uh, what you've been uh, doing. No way. <laughs> you just got to stop. Yeah, um, that sucks. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, so I just turned 40, right? Oh, yeah. And you're a little bit past me. Just a couple. <laughs> I have been putting off my 40s uh, doctor's checkup. And I keep hearing yeah, this whole time, like, <laughs> once you get to be 40, you know what's going to happen, right? Exactly. Bend over, baby. <laughs> Here you go. You get so, ready, so. I went in there and I'm just, my brother-in-law's giving me hell. He's like, you know what happens when you're 40. You know what happens when you're 40. Oh, yeah. And I go, Absolutely. yeah, well, let's just get this over with. So he gets in there and he's real cool. Like he gets a notebook out. And he's like, your blood pressure's good. Cholesterol's good. Like we ran blood tests the week before that. Of course. I'm thinking, just, I'm hearing this like, dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. Here it comes. Like, here it comes. <laughs> he goes, uh. Any history of prostate anything in your family? Oh, no. No, sir. He goes, okay, well, you're fine. I go, what? Yeah, lucky You know, I don't want to, like, correct him or say, yeah, you know, exactly. are you sure you need to check? Lucky for you. Uh, he goes, well, we always check at 50, and 45 is the new 50. Oh, it is. And so yeah. I was like, unless you have a history, if you tell yeah. me, like, your dad or granddad yeah. had a history or whatever, we're going to check right now. Like, no, 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 no history. No <laughs> We're, we're, we're gonna, so you're like I would I, I did have history. I completely escaped it, but I was it's thinking like history. What's I, that? I was thinking about this today because oh I was like, God. "Your bear is 44." I know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just Can you believe that? Crap? <laughs> one more year. The doctor told me that the other day. I got one more year, and I got to start doing that crap. Hey, every no. man is gonna have his day. No, I guess. You want to be so, safe and get that stuff yeah, well, early if you got anything going on? Well, I mean, there is one. But it just ain't nothing no, anybody looks forward listen, to. I'm never going to look forward to it. <laughs> but if there is one positive that comes out of it, you know, it is because when you do get them, you know, prostate cancer is a very curable cancer. Right. So now, now you just told me earlier yeah. why they're doing it at 45 now. Oh yeah. Well, unfortunately why they're doing it at 45 yeah. is because of all the dang processed food that mm. we eat. Mm. So they changed it from 50, which I had six more years to go to 45, not too long ago because of all the processed food. Because of all food. the Hot Pockets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I lived on Hot Pockets oh, back gosh. in college at the barbecue Hot and Pockets. Noodles. And Mountain Dew and yeah, Airheads, exactly. Like candy, it was it was candy. I, I loved Airheads. Oh, I never gosh. ate them after college because yeah. I I think I got eight cavities in one. Oh my um, gosh! Particular doctor's visit. And I was like, sort of the bomb though. I just can't. Those they just make awesome. me spastic. It's like yeah. three cups of coffee. Well, it's because it's freaking pure sugar. Now my kids eat them, <laughs> and I get them in a car, and we have it's a thirty sugar. minute drive out to the ranch, and they bounce off the back, you know, walls like Tasmanian wow. devils. Oh my God! Um, but it was That's Airheads. True. It was it was Hot Pockets. So you think about all the bad crap that we put in our bodies. It's like no wonder you're going. Our kids That's are going to exactly. be getting their prostate yep. checked at 15 mm -hmm. <laughs> because of all the crap. <laughs> 
I think I got this guy's permission to, to tell it. <laughs> we'll We're going to call him Billy. And Billy. Because Billy don't know. <laughs> okay, now Billy was getting his uh, prostate checked. He, Billy was oh, 45, man. right? And he is, you know that building on um, right off I-55, the big tall building, downtown Jackson, yeah. right? So it's like on the 11th story. Oh, my god. He was gosh. going in there, and he was getting his prostate <laughs> checked. And he's like a you know normal thing, just no. like we were talking about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's right in the middle of the procedure, okay? And no. the, I kid you not, mm -mm. the window glass cleaner um. is on our <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, whoo, you know, Spider Man <laughs> all the way down. Oh and, um, my gosh. And wow. he gets down to the level. He's got his no feet way. on the glass right there. <laughs> and he's bent over. Billy is bent over, completely compromised. And he looks no. back and he was all I could ask to say he was, Doc, are those windows tinted? <laughs> and the doc pauses for a second and he goes, well, if that's what you want me to tell you. Exactly. <laughs> they're tinted, I'll tell you that they exactly. are. Exactly. <laughs> He's watching the whole thing. And it's not like he can really maneuver yeah. that well. He's repelling right. like exactly. you know, 25 stories. Oh, my God. Right there off I-55, getting a prostate check. And there's guy. the old boy sitting there like. That's not window, guys. I was like, those windows on that particular room are not yeah. going to be very clean. Because no. he got out of there. He probably hightailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. No, it's good to have you here, man. Oh so, Bear wow. is the one that built this bar that we have virtually brought about 80, 90 million people yeah, to. Absolutely. Uh, back at this point. Pretty awesome. He's built Pretty this awesome. house. So, he got a ranch not too far from here. Um, and Bear lives so far out in the country, he's got to walk back toward town to go hunting. That's a fact. You know? <laughs> exactly. the, um, you were telling me about wow. the codes in Mississippi versus Florida. It's just something about that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the building codes for all you carpenters the, and GCs oh, out there. Yeah. The building codes versus Florida, because I don't know, just, just Mississippi, I guess. Yeah. So. But just all the stuff that I'm used to in Florida, the the inspector was just like, Yeah, you can throw that out the door. Yeah. Don't don't worry about that yeah. stuff. You know, he's like, You don't need that up here. <laughs> he's like we're good. But you're building your house yeah. extra safe anyway. Well, building a bunch I, of I'm you still know. using, you know, I'm still in my mind because I'm Florida. I'm still building it the way I build it back down there. Yeah. But up here, it's just so lenient. Because they got, they got uh, hurricanes they got to worry about. So. Well, that's the thing. You know, the wind, you know, we're up here, you know, you don't have as much wind and hurricane. I don't miss know. hurricanes at all. No, I don't miss that at all either. Yeah. So... But the, the codes are just, it's taking some you getting used to. So you spent half your life in Colorado and then Florida. Yeah, exactly. And now. My adult you know, life in Florida. So that's where I grew up and I learned how to build and learn how to, you know, do stuff like extra. Yeah. To go extra with the building and everything because <laughs> of the hurricanes and mm -hmm. stuff. And then I come up here and they're like, nah, you ain't gonna worry about all that stuff. <laughs> Hey, it's like, what? Looks good on the road. <laughs> exactly. Just, we'll just stamp pass on there and, and call it yeah. a good one. Looks good. We're good. The codes yeah. are different. Oh, my gosh. The yeah. the people are different. Now, I will say, people I love I love my here. Florida people. Yeah. Yeah. Mississippi. Oh, Florida people are cool, yeah. Mississippi is oh, just the heart of the earth. <laughs> this is the nicest, sweetest, kind They're of people. so sweet. That you could ever meet They're in your so life. Nice. They, genuinely, yeah. they genuinely give a crap. Absolutely about what you're going to. You'll go into the hardware store and they're yeah. asking, how's that house going? Exactly. You the know? hardware store, the gas station. When was the last time you went into a gas station and they knew who you were? <laughs> yeah. And they asked yeah. you how your house is going. Yeah. The gas station. Try, try that in Orlando. Really? Where we both came from. I've never been to a gas station or hardware store in in Orlando area that Asked that even knew my name, let alone asked me how the latest project was going that I was working on at the time. Right. But these everybody up here is just so friendly, and they just welcome in, <clears throat> welcome you into their home. Yeah. You know, and just they they genuinely care about. I feel like you. we're California's Texas. Yeah. You know, because exactly. I've seen a lot of Florida oh, tags around Mississippi, and I'm like, what? 
There yeah. is. Hey. Which was funny because when we first started coming up here, before we actually got our tags changed, mm -hmm. you know, it, it almost felt like we're at home still. Yeah. Like, because, you know, we're from Florida, so we were like, well, this is Florida. Oh, wait, no. This isn't Florida. This is Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. You know, because there's so many Florida tags around here, so... And I still see them all the time, which is crazy. You gotta like, uh, yeah. you, you definitely gotta change some things when you when you move here. Of course, I was I was born and raised here, so coming back home was just coming you. back home, yeah. right? And Lucky I knew you. how to speak uh, the language, and I knew how to mm -hmm. just slow down. You get up here, Ooh. It, you know, or down here, wherever yeah. you're from, and you start talking too fast. Ooh. You're done. That's the biggest thing. You're gonna yeah. get a hell of a time well, with whoever you're working with because they think exactly you're not really. Here's what I love the most about Mississippi is anytime you get somebody, whether it's contractor or somebody new or whatever that you're, you know, invite over or that you talk to, yeah. they want to have time to visit. Visit. We don't want to have don't talk. time to visit. We don't talk, we visit. And not only, so case in point, you know, I had this um, insulation guy come over, this contractor come over just yesterday. Yeah. And... We sat there for an hour and a half and visited. And we talked about my project, what I needed done the insulation for probably 10 or 15 minutes yeah. out of an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And we got to visit, but everything that, you know, they grow, you grow up in communities here. Mm -hmm. You grow up together and you live life together. Then what, you know, your kids grow up with each other and your kids, grow up with their kids yep and that's what to me that's what you know i love where i'm from and i you know god's put me on the path that i've been on but in deep down inside my heart and everything you know i wish that i had this mm -hmm. my whole life this is where yeah. my roots are this is where my heart is this is where you know where i'm at home People, peace. people are on standby to truly take care of you, yeah. you know, and it's, Absolutely. it's such a drastic difference. Like, it's just a lifestyle. Like, exactly. we'd love to hunt. And I remember killing a deer. I was up in uh, Georgia. Yeah. And I brought it down to Florida because the, the, the deer in Florida are like dogs with antlers. Oh, my they're, gosh. Yeah. They're, so they're not as big as that jackalope no. behind you. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, who, by the way, I'll tell the story. I, I was on a six-hour standoff with him in yeah. Texas. Back in 2017, I could tell you the whole story. <laughs> whole story. I smoked him out of a hole, and he came like 80 feet behind. And, you know, we put some firecrackers down there, and he popped up, and I was like, boom. That's we awesome. stuffed him. Heck yeah. I told that story to a girl. And I she remember believed that. Every bit of exactly. It. I, <laughs> I remember that story. But I cleaned yeah. the deer in the driveway awesome. inside of our oh, neighborhood at the time in Orlando, yeah. Florida. No. And my next door neighbors, they thought they, they could have called the National Guard. They probably did. <laughs> they never seen, and I, I found out later that they were uh, they were members of PETA. They called PETA. <laughs> well, they were members of PETA. Really? I found out, oh I found my out later gosh! Later. No way. And uh, oh, of course so they me, were. Yeah. This is oh. not showboating. It's not I'm trying to make a scene. It's just me being mean. I'm like, look, y'all, y'all got your own stuff and your your electric cars and. Yeah. You like your tidy little yards. Hey, I like to hunt. I happen exactly. at this little tiny season of my life to live in, you know, this uh -huh. little neighborhood. And I'm going to clean a deer. Exactly. Because it's got to be done. Well, it has to And be. he had been on ice for, exactly. you know, I drove home and uh, yeah. he was gutted and everything. But I still have to skin him. And, you still have to finish it. And finish it. So we take it to the processor. Man, I'm out there and I'm scanning the deer and this guy comes <sighs> out. And you would have thought that... World War Three was about to start. Oh my gosh! And the funniest part was he kind of left it alone for a little bit, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then yeah, <laughs> I had to get the blood out of my truck. <laughs> so I climbed up in the back of the truck and I had a uh, a pressure washer. And I was like, "This will do it." So I backed my truck all the way down to where the curb meets the street. Oh my gosh! I just take the pressure washer. Off. No <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> and each each streak is like red, just straight red, right? Yeah. And my idea was it was gonna oh it was gosh. gonna wash down the curb and go to this you know sewer drop off. Yeah. Which really was about fifty feet. Yeah. It didn't make it. Oh no. It. Oh. We were no. in a cul de sac and it <laughs> sat. The blood. Right the blood just thickened up. Oh. It sat <laughs> right in front of his driveway. Of course it did. <laughs> so I come up 
I come home. Oh my god. Oh no, he no comes way. home and he <laughs> he pulls up in his Tesla and he rolls through the blood. Just yes. Okay. That's awesome. He kind of he kind of gets out and you know and he's what like, the what the hell is that? He's, I think he said the word substance. That substance right there. Oh my gosh. I go, what the heck? It's deer blood. I just clean my dad got deer and try to clean it out. I was like, I'll try to flush it down the sewer for you. Oh my god. He's like, what? who does this? Who does this? You know. Yeah. He's just an ass, and we never had a good typical Orlando people. You know, it, a lot of a lot of like <laughs> just deep city committed. Yeah. Bull following Orlando. There's a lot of damn oh, good Orlando people. There but are some you know, of them, but most of them, some of them are... came down from an even bigger city. Yeah, and they act like they don't know how to behave. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I just told my wife, I was like, I don't fit in here, and she says that I get, I got progressively more pissed off the more time came on. You know, because we were trying to get out, and I was like, I got to raise our boys with going yeah. on land. Absolutely, I want them out there with a shotgun, the side by side, and not worried about. Or the neighbors call him because, oh my God, I saw you with a BB gun. Oh, He's 10. He's that. supposed to have a BB gun. Yeah. You know? Well, that's the whole point, you know? Golly. Well, Orlando, there's no place to go. Well, you, got, you got your, uh, you got called because your dog was in the backyard and what? What, what were they called? Oh, yeah. On the freaking leash. <laughs> On a leash. I had freaking the, um, what do you call those people? You know, the dog pound. I don't know what you call them. What do you call those people? The dog pound That's, people. Yeah, the you dog know? pound. Yeah. They called them on you? So they called them because I put my dog on a leash because I have a big dog and I don't want him to be cooped up inside all day. So he needs to be out outside where he should be. Yeah. He should have freedom. Yeah. But obviously, if you don't put them on a leash and you live in a subdivision, you know, they have a little too much freedom. Uh huh. So I put them on a leash and the neighbors behind me called the dog pound <laughs> because I put him on a leash and I kid you not. I thought I was safe. I thought like, you know, well, you're just an idiot for calling them because nobody is going to have a code against putting a dog on a leash. But I kid you not. The town that we lived in had a code against it. And the lady just, said, next time I do it, she's going to find me for it. Next time I put my dog outside on a now leash. He, that dog was pissed off. I'm going to get a fine for that it. That dog was born in Mississippi and exactly. you were taking him down there because you ain't well, moved up here because yet. Because I haven't moved up here yet. Yeah. So he had to come down there. But she was a great travel buddy. <laughs> At the yeah. end of the day, he was still a puppy. He was a great travel buddy. Now he's happy. Now. He's a country dog. Now? And he's getting he got the, 16 and a half acres hey, of Rome on. No, no, no. He's got like 100. Because yeah, he's, well, been the, he's been in the neighborhood behind you. Oh, he's Your been in a couple. He's yeah. been getting he's in the been, trash. He's been, he's been getting into some mischief. It's about time for that. Snip. Oh, yeah. Both our dogs are going to be Unfortunately, tough. you know, it's about time for him to, you know, get rid of those too. So. They'll be complete liberals because they won't have balls. Exactly. And... It is what it is, but they are dogs. They are not human beings. Well, exactly. All right, so now Bear is building his own house. And when I say building his house, I don't mean subcontracting all that crap out. Exactly. I mean, you and two other dudes are physically yes. building Absolutely. a house. Yes, sir. So all I got to say is God has a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Because when I first, when, when me and my wife first started this in Denver, so let me start off with this. I've always had this dream of building my own house, yeah. but I never thought I would ever have the opportunity to build my own house, especially living in Florida mm -hmm. because the codes and just everything is just so strict and just, you know, not that I couldn't do it, but I, I don't have, I don't have the background in building homes. My background is building custom furniture, custom cabinets, custom bars. Yeah. You know, my, that's my background. Yeah. I've never built a house before. Florida would never let you build a house on your own by yourself, but Mississippi will. Uh -huh. So they did. So not only am I building this house by myself, I'm building it with my son yep. who learned how to read a tape measure a year ago, a year ago. It's never too late to start. So he's 23 years old. He just learned how to read a tape measure a year ago. Yep. It gets better than that. And I'm building it with 
a gentleman that God provided for us up here who didn't even know how to read a tape measure when we first started building this house. You hear let stuff along, like that, like... Let alone learn, have any framing or any of that experience, right? So now here you got two, two people that didn't know how to read a tape measure a year ago or a couple months ago. And then you got a guy who has a dream about building a house and but doesn't know how to yeah but god gave me a vision <clears throat> which he has done my whole career my whole business yeah every job that we have done i have not i did not know how to build yeah i had no experience it's a gift that god gave me and he gave me a vision and so i'm bringing that vision to life mm -hmm. now has it been smooth sailing absolutely not has your drink been picked up a little bit? Absolutely. Maybe just a little bit? <laughs> just a little bit. So. You want a refill, by the way? Mm. I got you. Sorry, you need one here. Keep telling me. Keep so, telling me. So, we start this endeavor, you know, and that's why I say God has a great sense of humor because, you know, it was like, here we got two people that barely know how to read tape. One didn't know how to read tape measure until we started, but the other one barely knew how to read and take measure and somebody with a vision that is fully trusting God to provide the way and provide everything. Yeah. So the, the framing on the first floor was a piece of cake. You know, it's just, yeah, it was, it was a breeze. I mean, we were just do to save my life, but oh know, yeah. Yeah. You've done, you've done enough to have. I've done, you know, I've done enough to know. Then we get to the roof. So you got this whole first floor framed out. Imagine that, you know? Yeah. This whole for first floor framed out. And then you look at the plans and you're like, well, I see a roof in the plans, but I don't see a roof on my house. <laughs> yeah. Where do you start? Like, where do you start? But this is where, this is where, you know, God will never get you to start something and never finish and help you through it. Right. You just have to trust him Yeah, every single day. And this is where we've started. We started this house two and a half months ago. And in two and a half months, you have the three of us, three guys, three guys yep. that have built this entire house. And none of us have any experience at all on building a house. Not only do we, did we build it and it looks incredible it looks now, incredible. it looks incredible now, but it is beyond what I could have ever imagined and it's built properly and safer than any other house in the area. It's incredible. Because Every contractor I get in there so far, that's been helping me do like the AC work and some other stuff, you know, they come in there and they're just like, wow, we've, we're very, when they find out that I've never done this before, they're impressed Yeah, because they've been in homes that have been built by people that knew what they were doing Do and they day. didn't, feel safe right. crawling around in the attic and doing the things that they're doing. People that do it all the time. It's just a testament, man. So, but that just tells you that if God is calling you to do something, yep. don't hold back. You have to trust him in what he's doing because this is no small feat. We're building a house, a, a, a house. house, homestead. This man. is no Home. small feat. Yeah. So I got to tell you, some of the stuff because you know we're building the house and we don't know what we're doing and we don't have all the proper stuff so but i gotta tell you will has been incredible when it comes to doing this roof yeah <laughs> and my brain works in mysterious ways <laughs> <laughs> on how to come up with well i don't know how we're gonna get up there and do that but i said i got an idea will yeah. And you're the light, you know, you're the lightest one here. You know, my you son, my son's afraid of, of heights. So I respect that yeah. you know, and he won't go up there and, and do that. I totally respect that. I would never put anybody in danger. You don't need to be 25 feet up in the air. I'm 330 pounds. I can't <laughs> get up there because neither one of them can hold me up. Yeah. So Will has been more than willing. To get up there, get up there and yeah. do some of this stuff. <laughs> some of this stuff. But here's the thing: when I can get up there and do stuff, he sees that all 330 pounds of me is going to get up there and crawl around on top of yeah. this roof and do stuff. So it gives him the confidence that 
he trusts me. Yeah. So when he trusts me and he knows that because my brain works in some mysterious ways, <laughs> the craziest, I, I, I don't even know where I come up with half the stuff, but some of the stuff that we come up with stacking stuff, you know, ladders on top of ladders. And then I'm holding up a ladder and I'm like, trust me. I said, I can hold your weight. So we put a ladder up and I said, I'm going to hold this for you. I said, trust me, you can go up there and do this. Yeah. And he does. He has no, he's just like, okay, over time. Yeah. But he sees that I'm willing to go up there and sacrifice and be able to get stuff done, whatever it takes to get the job done. So that drives him. You know, to be able to go up there. And every time I pull up there and come see you, it's like, that's a house. Now you got, now you got windows. Exactly. And doors are coming yes, in. Absolutely. And it actually looks like a legitimate it's house. So crazy. It really does. You know? You know? It's, it's it's amazing. amazing. We got AC going in right now. We got plumbing coming in this week. The the roof will go on next week. The shingles. You yeah. Know? So it's just, oh my so God. I feel like we live in a society it's where incredible. It's, everybody just thinks, I'm not going to even try to attempt to do X because I don't know how to do that or I don't have the proper schooling. And and I do credit my great home state of Mississippi for that. We, we had the attitude where it's like schooling, you know, whatever. You, you don't have to be the greatest this or that. You just start. I mean, hell, when I got up to Nashville and I walked in my first studio and we had world-class musicians like Tim McGraw's guitar player, Brad Paisley's exactly. fiddle player. Um, oh my gosh. Who do we have? Like Garth, Garth Brooks, the steel guitar player. That's crazy. And uh, wow. the, the guys are just so over my head. I put my guitar case back in my, you know, give me yeah. a, <laughs> like, hit it. Now. I, don't, I don't know how to play guitar. <laughs> exactly. You're like, I don't know what wow. the hell I was doing. And especially with the videos, didn't know what was going on. You know what you do? You start. And exactly. let that be a testament to anybody in whatever career you're, you're um, passionate about. You ain't got the skills, okay? So you ain't got the schooling. Doesn't matter. Okay. You don't need it. It. I mean, yeah. you don't necessarily need it. it you don't necessarily I mean, need too it. Too many people get hung up on all yeah. the, uh, you got to have a, a degree and then a master's and then a PhD. Absolutely. And you got to be an apprentice for so many years. And a lot, of, a lot of times I feel like that is very helpful, obviously. Um, but it can be helpful, but you don't need it. The faith walk is pretty oh, awesome. That's the most incredible because thing. we're sitting here yeah. enjoying the fruits of exactly not knowing just yeah. blindside faith. Oh man. my gosh. Blindside yeah. faith and how God has blessed Absolutely. both of our lives and we're still giving credit yes, to sir. him. Um, you know, and Absolutely. it's like, yep. It's incredible. We're the same guys Absolutely. as we were 10 years ago. Yeah. But I've got even more of a, a like a, a need inside of me to just push the pedal down to be faithful. To Our me. faith in Christ is a lot stronger, and we depend on Him more now than we did ten years ago when we had nothing. When we had nothing. When we have nothing. Yeah. So every dream I've ever had has pretty much come true in a worldly sense. Yeah. And yet I feel like I'm completely and totally empty without waking up and talking to the Lord. You have you know, to. And, Absolutely. and that's the way yeah. it's supposed to be. Absolutely. You have never arrived. There's yep. never going to be a point when you get there. Yep. You talk to any uh, professional athlete in any sport, you win the Super Bowl. Okay. Right. Well, well what still, next? What next? What next? Because After that's that. how we live, man. Exactly. What next? What yep. pinnacle can I get to that's Absolutely. above that? Yep. And I came to find out it's really like the way Solomon kind of ended Ecclesiastes, which is just like, there is no point to anything in life except to fear God. Exactly. Because I have had everything. He had every beautiful woman Absolutely. there ever was. Yep. He had all the mansions, all the wealth, all the money, all the notoriety, right. all the fame. <laughs> Everybody thought he had the biggest balls in Cowtown. <laughs> right. And he still was saying, I'm nothing without Christ. That's God. Absolutely. And I feel like as long as, no matter how successful yeah. you get, if you get locked into that mental space and you oh. hold on to it like it, because no. your life does depend on it. Exactly. Absolutely. He will never forsake you. He'll never, He'll never you. forsake you. You and I are living testimony Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can sit here and laugh over a cigar oh. and whiskey and <laughs> about all the hard times. And, yep. and have we been scared? Oh, all the time. Hell yeah. All the time. Have we been nervous? Yeah. Have, oh, I, absolutely. have we doubted? Oh, absolutely. 
all the time. There is no, we're not perfect. I get comments you know? sometimes that 99% of everybody we is, are not perfect, is by uh, means. a believer, but I love when I get somebody who, who is not, because that's an opportunity. I'm like, y'all, y'all don't understand. Uh, yeah. I'm, I totally hear you, yep. but I have tried everything. Absolutely. I have succeeded and I'm still telling you yes. that I am nothing without him. I haven't changed him. You know, take or leave it. This is just, this is just us talking. This is just a backwoods conversation. Absolutely. Out in the middle of nowhere, but it has worked. He has been true to his word all Every the way time. through. All the time. And uh, man, I wouldn't change any of our journeys for the world. I wouldn't either. You know. So, you know, <laughs> my life didn't turn out the way that I planned it, but it turned out perfect in the way that God planned yeah. it. And I never would have dreamed in a million years that my life would have turned out the way that it did. But my dream of how my life turned out is minuscule compared to the way that God's had yeah. God's plan for my life. The pure joy that I have in my life now. Yeah. Because it's good to be is scared. More it's good to be nervous. Than anything that I would have ever dreamed of. And I think it's good to hit rock bottom. Oh, absolutely. It's good to be depressed. Sometimes that's what we need to get our mm -hmm. to knock ourselves up the head, upside the head and be like, mm -hmm. you know what? You know, God will take you, it will put you at rock bottom. You know, yeah. sometimes we get too stubborn and, you know, we're just like, no, God, I got this. I don't need you. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me show you. So, let, so me give, uh, let me give a shout out to my son real quick. <laughs> Go because, for it. you know, I was bragging about Will for the moment, you know, about how he was willing to do all that crazy stuff because my mind. Right. My son has challenged himself tremendously through this all. He is afraid of heights, but yet he sees through our testimony, you know, what we're willing to do mm -hmm. and the sacrifices that we make. And he's willing to challenge himself too. So I got to give a shout out to him too, because he has challenged himself through this build and he has gotten up on scaffolding that he was terrified of. He's gotten up on a ladder that he was terrified of because he sees what we're doing and he knows that we need to do this to get the job done. Right. So while he's afraid of heights, you need to do all the crazy stunts that, you know, me and Will did, but he definitely- He's, he's 23. He's 23 yeah. years old. Love him to death. And he is amazing. Which I guess that he would fall yeah. under a millennial. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, and, and we're that rare breed. We're he's that a, generation X. Oh. So Jeff, you know, both. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're both, um, everybody talks about baby boomers and then millennials, but that yeah. little wedge that nobody talks about all the time, Generation X, which is pretty much where both of us yeah, fall. Exactly. I mean, I'm 82. I've read about it. Some And some graphs, I'm Gen X, and some graphs, I'm millennial, but there's no way in hell I'm a millennial. No. You're the farthest thing from a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is exactly up to us so. to to reach down and, and tell these, and, yeah. and they, uh, millennials get a lot of crap because they're all looked at like they're lazy. Yeah. They're all looked at like they don't know anything. And a right. lot of cases that's true. Well, a lot of cases they terrify. The but they're, they're not always. So the guys that are out there yeah. watching this that not fall in that category and you're like, not that's always. not me. That's not who yeah. I am. Exactly. We see you and we hear you. And, and I promise you guys yeah. like us, and especially the older that's guys right. that are older than us, the baby boomers and the yep. Vietnam generation, God bless them. They will have Absolutely. the most incredible respect for you if you're just willing to listen, if you're just willing to learn. Learn. We'll teach you. Absolutely. Actually, we get joy out of teaching. I love teaching the millennials. I love if teaching you that it, younger generation. It's yeah. if they're willing to learn, if get they're off, willing to put in the time. Right. Get off the video games. Absolutely. Get off your phones. Don't get off the video game. Wrap yourself up in social media. Absolutely. I mean, I got to tell my boys that all the time. Get out in the woods. My boys are not allowed to have social media. That's awesome. It is. That they is, they is, are is, so. They might not think so. They might not think they so. They are. Uh, but the, that is the only amazing. kids at their school probably oh, that I'm don't sure. have an Instagram. And I say, look, exactly. Daddy's got about two million followers. I've seen yeah. all the effects of that. Absolutely. You do not need to be. That's right. 13 years old and getting DMs from. That's right. What's <laughs> exactly. She don't need to show you nothing. 
No. 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 And she had no. no. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Um, <laughs> and I, I applaud nope. them so much because they have become very allergic to BS. They are they become incredible allergic to, young men. Thank you. They are very you. incredible young men. Um, oh. It is it is the, the I love day feelings. and night job. And you know, we yeah. call them, you know, they, they call Uncle Bear. I mean, he's, <laughs> exactly. he's literally not family, but he is because it's... Uh, family is who you choose. Family is who you choose. Yeah. You know? It's not uh, always blood. I, I look it's, at a lot of my absolutely. extended family, and we've talked yep. about that. They Absolutely. It is not... Yep. Family is not and bl blood. It's who's got they, your back. They are my family. You are my family. Yeah. You know, and, and always will be. So, well, I, but I, that's what's beautiful. That's what's awesome about God because he puts the people into your life that you need. Sometimes for a season, uh -huh. sometimes for a lifetime. Yep. So you just have to trust him and just follow his lead. There's a, you know, and a, not a big personal or political uh, ally with Tyler Perry, but. When he was doing that, that Medea, it is a lot of wisdom, man, because he was doing that Medea thing. And he said, um, there's certain people in your life that are leaves, which means they're going to come and go every day. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. there's going to be certain people that are branches. And those people will fool you because you step out on them sometimes and that weight will give and they, that branch will just snap. And then... There's a few people in your life that God will give you that are absolute roots. And if you can get two, oh my God, maybe three roots in your life. Yeah. Hell, if you can get one. Yeah. But if, if you, can you can get, get one, if yeah. you can get two or three roots that will never go, oh. even if, you know, the tree is falls exactly. down and gets struck by Absolutely. lightning, that root is still there, then you've done it. Yep. You don't need nothing else. No, you don't. And that's the most Absolutely. beautiful part. So find those roots. Absolutely. Um, and don't get disappointed in the branches because they're just meant to be branches they're just meant to be leaves Absolutely. they're supposed to come and go they're supposed to be a season uh where they're supposed to be in your life but it's really special will. when you do get a root and but i know you need those. they're one of my roots oh absolutely and it's just yeah i got my wife definitely i got bear yeah <laughs> and i've got my kids and i really don't need no. anything more than that no because it's just it's like god knows that yeah and he provided that for us mm -hmm. so and we'll always be there so, absolutely. Well, I love what you're doing, man. I love um, it's so amazing all the stuff you've accomplished. And maybe we'll show a picture of the house once you finish up. Oh, you wouldn't believe three guys did this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you this can't. Wild. Just to this point, three guys? Come on. Yeah. Really? Not just any old And then guys. you'll be open for three business. Three faithful guys. And you can come out here and build a Western town for me. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> this so. is the saloon, right? Absolutely. I mean, you built the, the bar here. Yeah. We did the shelf. Yep. Uh, it's That's just going to be awesome. Put some wood this floors in home. here. This is where home is. This is just the most Absolutely. comfortable place in the world. And when I'm sitting out here with the boys, just uh, listening to the fire crackle at midnight, because we're about to hunt the next morning. And yeah. It's the best feeling in the world. There's no other place I'd rather be. You and cannot, yeah, I think about the days when we were in the subdivision. And no. hey, if you're there for that season of life and that's where you're at right now, just embrace it and and just live everything out that you can. Yep. Thank God for those days. But if you got a desire to get to the country at all, I promise you it's worthwhile. Yes. You don't need to hear sirens and leaf blowers all day long. No. Some crickets will do you good. <laughs> Exactly. Right. <laughs> Love you. Man. Love you. Oh, dude. That was awesome. <laughs>